G'day guys, in this quick video I'm going to show you how I made my own door security system at home. So anytime you open a door or you close it, you'll get a notification straight to your phone. This cost me about, about $10 to build in parts and it took me about an hour to make. So stick around if you want to see how we do these. So how does it work? Let me explain whilst I'm up a ladder. That seems like a good idea. So what we have to start with is we have something called a reed sensor or a magnet sensor. This part here is a magnet, that's the bit you stick on your door. This part here is a sensor. Now there's a little lever in there on a spring and then as the magnet goes away or comes to the, to the sensor here, the lever will either break or disconnect the circuit. So that's how you can tell if, if things are open or closed. And then I've got some wires running up here. Look at that wire work, fantastic isn't it? And then behind here what we have is ooh, it's fly. we have something called an ESP32 which is a microcontroller you've got the two leads there the black and the yellow coming from the sensor and then this here is the USB cable and that's just running up to a PowerPoint so absolutely dead simple let me get down to safe ground and we'll just run through the parts that you need so what do we need to build this at a bare minimum you need these pieces here some of my viewers may be from a technical background, so they'll immediately be able to recognize what these things are. Um, but I'm trying to cater to a, to a wider audience, so please forgive me if I sort of cover some, some basic stuff. Um, so what you need is the brains of it. So this is an ESP32. Um, it's kind of like an Arduino, if you know what they are. Um, Arduinos are popular with uh, school kids like learning to code and so on. Um, it's a bit like that, but it's, it's way better, way cheaper. Uh, it's got um, onboard Bluetooth and onboard Wi-Fi, so you can connect this to your home network if you need to send messages out, connected to Bluetooth devices. Down here we've got a JST battery port, so you can connect that to a, to a battery. You can also connect it to a charging board and then connect that to a solar panel, so you really can go off-grid if you want to. Um, and then you've got all your standard GPO pins that you would connect to your different sensors. In our case, it will go to the root sensor. So the ESP32 itself is the bit that's underneath this, this metal shield. Um, there's an antenna on top, you can kind of see that in the light, I guess. And then the rest of the board is called the, the dev kit. So when you look on AliExpress, they may not look identical to, to this one. Um, you know, the ports may be the other way around, or it could have them both on this side, or it could have a USB-C instead of a micro and so on. Um, but just, just search for an ESP32 dev kit. They're all the same, they're just you know, slightly different form factor. And I've fondled this way too much. I'm gonna bend these pins at one point. Right, SP32, about five, six dollars Australian, plus that three or four American. You can get you can get them even cheaper. Um, if you can find them in the sale. I've had them down for like two dollars. Uh, next thing is your magnetic reed sensor. Not really much more to say about these. You can get these in a moldy pack for a few bucks. Jumper cables just buy a heap of them, you know, you'll get them by the hundred for a few dollars. They come in different different ones. This is a female and a male, but you can get two males and two females. So what I'll do is I'll I'll plug the female end into one of these pins. I'll cut this bit off here and then solder onto there. I do that because I like to sort of take my projects apart over time and then, you know, add new features and so on. So it's just nicer to plug them in rather than solder them on directly. Uh, you're going to need a USB cable, but that's bloody pointless, isn't it? Look at that. You can't do anything with that. Get one that's bigger than that. Um, and then you're going to need uh, a container for it. Now, this came from a succulent Chinese meal. Um, doesn't really matter, you know, but a tub, anything like that will do. It doesn't have to look prettiest in a shed anyway. So I just plonk my bits in there and slide the cable through here. You can spend more money if you want to, but who cares? And what you may also want to get, because these cables are, are pretty short, you, you might be okay, maybe you can mount this very close to your door, but in my case, it needed to go further. So you can either use some single core cable, again, AliExpress, dirt cheap, or you can use some two core cable. So there's actually two cables underneath this black insulation. It just makes it look nice and tidy of just having a single cable. Um, and then you might want to use some heat shrink to sort of cover over the bits that you solder and so on. Look at that. AliExpress. I think that was about $3. That's amazing. I love AliExpress. 
Uh, if you don't want to spend the money on that, then yeah, just some ghetto insulation tape will do the job as well. All right, so I am going to plug these in and then we'll look at how we write the code. Right, let's have a look at some code. I'll do my best not to bore you to death. Once again, I'm trying to appeal to a wide audience, so forgive me if some of these things were a little bit basic. I'm trying to include as many people as I can. So here I am in Arduino IDE. I have my board connected via USB. You can see down the bottom here, it says that the Lolin D32 is on USB serial. So that means it's all connected. Um, so the first thing you're gonna need, if you don't already, is to have some libraries. Um, I have a bunch of libraries on here because I've done several projects and used lots of different things. Um, but the libraries that you will need to install is the HTTP client by Arduino. That's what we use to call Discord. Um, and then you're going to need the Arduino JSON by Benoit Blanchon, something like that. So get those two libraries and then you should be good to go. All right, let me run you through what we're doing here. Very simple. So let me just preface this by saying I have some code in here to deal with configuration. So I place a configuration file on each of my devices um, that are different for each one. So each one has got its own name and so on. Um, and then that allows me to have some very generic code that I can just deploy to all of my devices at once. So if I'm making any updates, I can just, yeah, do that once. And I've also got some Arduino OTA, which is over the air. Um, and that allows me to deploy to my devices without having to plug them in, which is kind of handy if they're in awkward to reach places. So some of those things um, may not be 100% relevant to everyone. I will do another video covering those things anyway. I just thought I'd point out that there's some extra, extra things in here. So right at the top, we have to pick our pin that we're gonna put our read switch on. I've picked 15. 15 is right at the bottom of my board. It just makes it easier for me to plug it into that one. I don't have to count halfway up the pins and lose count and get it wrong. It just makes it easy for me. And then we initialize the state to zero, which typically means off. Configuration wise, if you wanna use my config, um, pattern feel free to do so if not then you have to plug these in uh, inside the code um, but you're gonna need a name so this is what I call my thing so this particular one is called the PA door personal access door you're gonna need your Wi-Fi name and your Wi-Fi password because you need a way of sending notifications and then in my case I'm using discord so I've got my webhook URL so for those who aren't familiar with Arduino, there is basically two methods that, that get executed. You have your setup and, and your loop. So your setup, um, that runs once your board starts up. So every time you start it up, it'll run the setup and then it won't run it again until you restart it. And that's very handy for initializing your board. So setting up your, your Wi-Fi connection, loading your config, um, any of those sort of things you want to do once off. So in our case, all we're doing is, is connecting to Wi-Fi. So again, if 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 you don't want to use my config, then just go ahead and plug in your, your Wi-Fi um, name and password into here directly. Next thing is your loop. So what your loop does is it runs from top to bottom, and then as soon as it's finished, it goes back around again, and it just does that in an endless loop. So having a look at what we do, so there's the OTA, you can skip over that. Um, but what we do is we do a read on the pin to see if it's high or low, and that tells us if the door is open or closed. Um, and then we have these two if checks here, and this allows us to look at the previous state. So we say if it was previously low and now it's high, then the door's opened, and the inverse, if it was high and now it's low, then the door is closed. And then we end and we go back around again. And we just keep doing that forever. So what we do is we just log a message. It just makes it easier to see when I'm debugging. Then we publish the transition event. And then we set the current state to be what we've just read. So when we go around again, we, we know. So in terms of acting on this door transition, 
You can do anything you want here, really. You could send an SMS. You could send an email. Heck, if, if you even had a camera attached, you could take a photo or, or anything you want, basically. Um, but in my case, I'm keeping it very simple. And I am just sending a Discord message. So if you don't have Discord, go ahead and just download it. It's free, free to create an account. When you create an account, you can then create a chat channel. And then when you've got your chat channel, you can create a bot. Um, and then you can grab the webhook for that bot. And then anytime you poke that webhook, that bot will spit out a message in your channel. And that's what I'm doing. So when I go to publish a Discord message, the first thing I want to do is check if the Wi-Fi is still connected because it's possible that the door hasn't opened or closed for several days. Um, we just want to make sure we're, we're still connected. And then we want to connect to our Discord webhook URL. So again, if you don't want to use my config, just plug in your, your URL there. And then we build up some content to send the webhook. So I build up a string here saying door, whatever the door name is, has become open or closed. So door, PA door has become open, for example. And then I just stick in the transition value as well as an extra field. We serialize that JSON and then we post it to the Discord URL and then we do a check to see if that was successful or not. And then we end and we just keep going around and around checking constantly. So what I can do is I've got the device on the desk in front of me. So if I pull the magnet away, we'll see in the serial monitor, the door has opened and we'll see we've got a 204 from Discord, which means the message was sent. And then if I put the magnet back, door is closed and then pull it away again door is opened and then close it again simple as that so I will put a link out to my github page so you can go and grab all this code and read through it in your leisure I have lots of these dotted around the property I've got them in my shed on three doors there I've got them on two doors in the garage I've got it on the woodshed. I'm even going to put one on the front gate if I can find a waterproof enclosure. They just work so great and they're cheap. I have heaps of other sensors too. I've got some sensors in my water tank so I can measure how full my tanks are without going and looking in the, in the hatch. And I've got a bunch of sensors in my chicken pen doing different things. So yeah, I'll try and get around to adding some more, more videos. But yeah, if you could give us a, a thumbs up and a sub, that will give me the encouragement to come back and do more. Thanks, everyone.